Okay, hello there. How is everyone? My name is uh, Sebastian Marciano. I'm a developer. On the mic. Where is the mic? This one. Okay. Uh, I'm a developer at New Tyler. Uh, we are building a so, um, open source payment system, and I want to talk about it, uh, how it is built, wh what uh, I, it is aiming. So. Uh, first, I want you to uh, know that this is a digital payment system, it's not a banking system. So I wanted to show you some examples of what, what does it mean. And it's a payment system that is token-based. So what does it mean a payment system that is token-based? So the, the wallet that the user is going to be installing will have the, the token like cash, like physical tokens. It's not going to have a reference and, uh, account to a database. So in this way, um, it will be very faster and easier to pay to some merchants uh, because there is no third party involved. Um, we are going to, I want to talk about a use case first to set up uh, what we are going to talk. There you will see some differences with cryptocurrency. Um, we are talking a, a little about them and why it's different, just to, to, to keep in touch why it's different. And then we are jumping into the main components of Taller and how they interact to build up the system. And if you are really lucky enough, we are going to see some demos. I have some, I built something interesting here that I wanted to show you for this talk. So I want to hurry up so we will have time for everything. So this is Alice. Alice uh, likes uh, building video games from since was a kid. She grew up and she built an um, arcade room and the, good, the business is going, is, uh, is going really good, but she has a problem. Uh, I'm coming from Argentina and Alice is from Argentina and Argentina has this problem with currency that is the inflation is very bad and the currency, uh, the money has is starting to get uh, low value. So she's not rich, but she's having problem with the cash. And she said, since she's a hacker and she uh, always working uh, with um, with digital things, and she said, okay, maybe we I, we can move into the digital world to try to solve this problem. Uh, let's start to think what we can use. She knew about this conference, but she couldn't come here. And she first th thinks in credit card, but she has this issue that kids do doesn't use credit card. Uh, not yet. Um, also, in, in this case, credit card has this issue that has some fee that is really high relative to the cost of playing a game, so it's not possible for her. Uh, she also think, is thinking in, in about uh, this platform, like uh, all the platforms that are they're really open, but most of them doesn't have open APIs, like we saw in some talks. Um, if she wants to integrate with some vendors, because some of the people that are coming here have some accounts in a particular platform, she will need to integrate to a different platform and it will be a hard problem to solve. So another, uh, another guy came, Bob, and suggested an idea. You need blockchain, he said. But Yes, it may be a solution, but she started to think about the main, car, main blockchain, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and for her particular problem, the transaction cost and transaction delayed, maybe it's an issue. Um, Lightning Network is promising. Building a new coin for this particular case seems like a bigger problem than the initial one. So she keeps investigating what, what is around. It's not a bad solution. I'm not saying it's not a bad solution, but there are alternatives. And she heard something about this guy, Richard. I don't know if you know about him. But um, in, a, in a conference, in, in a speaking, he mentioned a project called New Tyler that is, has this uh, feature that is uh, anonymous and private for the consumer, but not for the one who's selling or providing the services, the merchant. 
So she thought, mm, okay, maybe it's nice, and started investiga investigating about this, this project. And she found that Tyler is much more closer to the cache than an, an account-based system. When you have an, an account-based system in the physical world, you have a ledger when you have a debit card account and a credit account, and you move money from one place to another. And in the cache, you have something that um, you give to someone else uh, to cancel some transaction. And moving this into the digital world, uh, in the part of using token in the digital world, you have this problem of um, double spending. So Tyler addressed this issue using a centralized exchange and some tokens that uh, guarantee the customer that is not being traced by the exchange. The exchange cannot um, correlate the withdrawal with the deposit. So the exchange, whenever it gets a deposit, it doesn't know who, who is the money from. So the user gets uh, private payments and with no traceability. A lot of uh, people uh, is talking about the democratic risk uh, of uh, using um, account-based system in, in government, so this is interesting. It's not part of what ICE is thinking right now because she wants to build an arcade room, but okay. Seems like a lot of people are working on this. She also found nice documentation that you can check out. The documentation to, to build this is open source. It's not just open source, it's flow. So she, as a hacker, can build on top of this software, build solution for her. Talk to the community, uh, read in the news. A lot of information there that you can also check out. And she reading through the, this documentation, she understood the, the key components of the system. And the key components are basically, I'm going to, to talk just a few of them because there are more. Um, the exchange, the wallet, and the merchant. So a customer who wants to buy something using Tyler needs to install a wallet. Uh, there is a web extension to use the browser and a mobile extension. We are going to see them running. There is an exchange. This exchange, you, you need to think of it as an interface of a banking system. So if I want to use cash, if I want to pay in the street, I go to an ATM, I get cash and use it in, in a merchant. This is the same, but in the digital world. So the wallet is going to talk to the exchange to say, hey, I want to get uh, Tyler tokens. By the way, this Tyler token doesn't have a market value like um, a coin in crypto coin. These Tyler tokens, if they are uh, dollars, they are, you have $10, you have $10 in your wallet. It's not like an, an extra currency involved. So the exchange gives you the coins into the wallet. There's a withdrawal process. Um, the exchange doesn't know who is getting the, the coins, doesn't have an account or information about the user who is getting the coins. And then the wallet is going to use these coins to sign tickets needed that the merchant needs to create for the, to, to provide the services, to, to get paid. So after the wallet uh, signs or pay the, the merchant, the merchant can use this information, this contract signed by the coins, to say to the exchange, hey, I want this money that I get because I was paid with, the, with your currency. You see the loop here, and the, the exchange cannot um, relate who was the, the, the one that um, withdraw the money, not even when it withdraw the money. So the, the user gets the, the privacy that he needs. And the merchant needs to uh, tell the exchange how money is, is getting. So um, it's, this is really important to, to be taxable. So, so far, so good? So okay. Yes. Tyler is the exchange. Tyler is the whole system, the whole protocol that interacts with the system. And what we are building is the protocol so every individual component can be created by uh, different participants. So and you can build a, a wallet um, that follow this protocol and to talk with different exchanges and different merchants. So we have a software a reference to that I'm going to show you right now, but someone else can build another wallet and use it with everything inside that I'm going to show you. The same for the exchange and the merchant. So 
after she saw this, she say, okay, show me the money. Where, where is the, the demo? I want to see it running. So first, she installed a web station. I am going to show you right now. Um, yes, I can show it. Um, she installed a web extension. Uh, she withdraw money from a bank uh, that we have in the demo. We have a bank because uh, if the, maybe this is uh, a better way to show it. So when you fill a, a wallet, you need to talk to the exchange, and the exchange is going to say, "Okay, you want ten dollars in Taller coins. You need to send me ten dollars in my bank account." So what? We are going to see if that um, the customer is going is going to be at the ex uh, bank account saying I want to withdraw coins, and the exchange is going to say okay, send me your ten dollars to my account. I am going to print it for you, and you are going to I am going to give uh, these coins to your wallet. With that, um, the customer can talk to the merchant, and when the merchant say you need to pay for this, uh, the customer is going to use the wallet to sign the contract and the merchant is going to receive this signing contract and tell the, the exchange I want to receive this money in my bank account. Yes, so this exchange is um, services is like um, interface like the credit card because uh, it's allowed you to pay. It's an, another payment system for uh, uh, different things. So if we can do this let me see because I'm in another machine. Let's try to do it. <coughs> we can go to demo.taller.net. I don't know who is the computer, <laughs> but I'm going to start the install the Taller wallet. <laughs> you, and you, also, you will see that it was not prepared. I was not prepared for this computer, so. There you go. We have a good installation. And as you see, I have no balance here. There is no money yet. I am going to go to the bank, the demo.tyler.net. I have already installed my wallet. I'm going to be and the, at the bank. Let's create a new user. Alice. Alice too, because I think I'll be sorry there. Enough. There we go. Never. So this bank is a also reference software that another bank can build. And this bank knows about Tyler, so it has a button that said the start withdrawal process with Tyler. So the bank is going to uh, show me a page with a QR code to start the withdrawal process. So when I start withdraw, uh, the withdrawal process, um, you will see this QR code and my extension know that this page has this withdrawal, so I'm going to withdraw money. Before doing the withdrawal process, I need to acknowledge the long, long, long thermal service. And when I confirm, then I'm going the wallet sent me back to the bank because the bank need a confirmation step. They said, okay, you are going to send five kudos to the exchange. You see that? So, seven times seven is 49, I think, yes. And there we go. The, the wallet has received the, uh, the coins. The wallet doesn't know about the, the user doesn't have any information about the user. The exchange doesn't have any information about the user. The bank only knows that the user uh, wire transfer to some account, so the exchange account. And uh, we have already there uh, the coins. So next, I'm going to go to a, a, a shop. This shop has an iteration with Tyler. Uh, it responds 402 payment required when there is some article that needs payment. So the, the wallet uh, knows about this. The, when it founds 402, it uh, redirects to the Tyler URI that has, is in the header of the response. And I can use Tyler to pay this. 
like if it is a credit card in, in my my browser so when I pay this first I go to a confirmation page so I'm in, in a secure environment to, to make the payment it shows me some information as you can see there is also fee involved I'm going to talk a little about it uh, and when I do payment I can see the article the the merchant that is uh, the merchant that is in, in the bag is receiving the coins and he will talk to the exchange to, to get the deposit back. So another thing that uh, Ali saw in this demo is the tipping uh, feature. So the merchant can ask for payment but also can tip the user given certain actions. So here what, what are we seeing is um, uh, a question, what payment do you prefer? It doesn't matter the answer, but the thing is that um, when Alice answers this, he can get a tip from the merchant. When Alice accept this tip, okay, you have the tip. I can see the balance here. I have a withdrawal, a payment, and a tip from the backend demo, and this gives me money that I can use in other in other any other place. Yes, and any other merchant. So effectively, I'm getting money like cash in my wallet. So going back to what is also what, what is Alice doing? Oh, how can I show you this? Uh, this should be a. Uh, to get it in here. I'm not, ah, yes. Sorry. This is also dual, dual with um, an Android device. We have an Android application. Uh, I want to show you something here. Uh, there is an Android, you, you can search for Taller Wallet. So after seeing this, I thought, OK, this is my software. But I want my arcade room using this. What I need to do? So no, not that one. This one. So she thought about this um, using a cache validator uh, connected to a computer to create a tip. So every time you use a cache validator, uh, it will create a tip that a, a user can scan with the mobile device to get money from to his her or his wallet. And then using another QR code in a machine to do a payment. And since there is all the code there to, to be used and it is free software, she can start doing that and build the system. So after play, playing a little around, she came with this QR code. I will try to scan it right now. Let me check. With the Teller wallet. Uh, so since I'm not, I have not uh, yet uh, filled with the cash, the, uh, the, the wallet doesn't, doesn't do anything. But we can try to, uh, let's go to the in this part. So as you can see, the, the money went through. So if I use another one, it, it won't validate. But if I scan it again, uh, come on, come on. it's checking the tip. So this uh, QR code is just that URL. I can use also the web extension uh, to, to do the pickup. But what Talis want to do is uh, use the mobile phone. So uh, every client there in the in the arcade room can use her mo its mobile device. So you can see I'm getting 20, uh, 20 pesos from Argentina. I can accept this tip. Uh, the, the information said also that is uh, this. Uh, Tipping is from the, the merchant. Now I have this balance in my in my wallet, and then what I can do 
is another QR code with the payment that every QR code might be different from different uh, arcade machines. So when you pay, you need to review the payment. And you can confirm. And it's playing. OK. So after she built this up, she thought, OK, this, oh no, this is not the machine. <laughs> This is this seems like a, a good solution, yeah, and she tries and she and she's uh, trying to build this right now in Argentina. Doesn't matter. But this is it. This is Taller, and as you saw, there is no blockchain involved. Some some services running in, in a server. Uh, all crypto technology uh, is mainly based on a paper from. David Schwamm and Black Signatures, that's why um, the key, the token that the wallet gets uh, cannot be correlated from the deposit to the withdrawal, so the user gets uh, privacy and anonymously. Uh, there is a lot of topics that we didn't talk here, but are really important. We just talk about the, the main features. Um, there, is, uh, there is auditors that audit the exchange, there is a back office software that uh, the merchant can use to create other orders. Well, maybe I can show you. Because it's here when you see something running. Um, merchant. This uh, merchant backend is the one being used uh, by the by the arcade. So you you will see the orders and for creating a, a tip uh, a tipping, you need to create a reserve that that links in exchange. So you are going to say the exchange, I'm going to save this money, so user can pick up and you have an an API to authorize authorize this uh, this tipping. Um, let's jump here. There is also nice other features that, for example, age restriction coins. There are some coins that you can uh, create uh, if you want, for example, um, to give coin to kids that cannot be spent in some uh, products that are for uh, 18 or greater. So this <coughs> coin cannot be used with those, with those products. Uh, it is a really cool protocol because the kid doesn't need to give any information about the age or uh, who, he, who he is or she is. Uh, it is in the coins, so the kids get these coins, like parenting, for example. You, as a, as a parent, you need to give uh, the kid a special wallet, or when you do the withdrawal process, you need to ask the exchange, okay, I want uh, coins that cannot be expensed in beer, for example. Um, every operation can have fees, uh, so the, the exchange can operate uh, and charge for the operation. There is a work in progress in the P2P payment because, as, you, as I mentioned, you have the tokens in your wallet. But if you share this token with other person, you need to trust, uh, the person who is receiving the, the coins need to trust that uh, the coins are not going to be spent before you. So the P2P protocol uh, what allows is that you, need, you don't need to trust the other person who is giving you the coins. And of course, the wallet is like a physical wallet. If you lost the, the wallet, you lost the money. It's not an account with a reference or to some places. Mm, no, I work. So that's everything. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, there are a lot of links. This slide is in my talk in schedule, so you can check for the links. You won't remember everything. This everything, but uh, the important thing here is that uh, central banks are taking central banks are taking notice about this and talking about um, future implementation of digital money. 
and it's a really cool project, really easy to jump in. I started working here uh, almost two years from now. Um, so please join. And that's it. Hope you like it.